natural disasters cause widespread loss of life and huge destruction, often wiping out whole areas of housing. But in Chile, they're trying to work out how to keep a roof above people's heads, even amidst an earthquake. Gideon Long reports from the capital. On Saturday, February the 27th, 2010, Chile was hit by one of the most powerful earthquakes ever recorded. With a magnitude of 8.8, .8, it lasted just three minutes, but it caused more than $30 billion of damage and killed over 500 people. At the time, the Titanium Tower was the tallest building in Chile at 190 metres. And yet it survived almost entirely intact, thanks to some clever engineering developed right here in Santiago. So this roof where we're standing in the 2010 earthquake, how much would it have moved? Maybe 60 centimetres or so. 60 centimetres. Mm -hmm. And without the seismic protection? Over a metre. How vulnerable is the country to earthquakes? Well, Chile, Chile is one of the most seismically active countries in the world. You know, earthquakes means about, about $1 billion a year. That's more or less, you know, the, the amount of money we spend. For years, Professor Juan Carlos de la Llera, engineer and entrepreneur, tried to convince Chileans that his seismic protection devices were a necessity. The earthquake five years ago changed everything. After 2010 was a huge validation of the technology, not only for Chile, I think. The beauty of this is that the solution is here, okay? It's, uh, it's just a matter of convincing and getting, of course, you know, costs going down. The company has a toolkit of tech. In the tower, they used X-shaped steel dampers called seismic isolators, which twisted in every direction when the quake hit, absorbing 40% of the movement. What's new about your technology? Okay, so basically, it's not only a matter of protecting the building not to fall or not to collapse, but it's, it's a matter of protecting the building to keep working after an earthquake. And there's no reason not to protect a building with a factor of safety that is maybe eight or ten times bigger than a normal structure. In Chile, they're now working the costs into new tall buildings. Quake Tech is up to 2% extra, or $40 a square metre. Juan Carlos's success has spurred him on to develop new devices. So this is the next generation of technology. This is a viscous damper. There is a piston inside that will push the fluid and will make the fluid to move from one chamber to the other. And in that process of moving from one chamber to the other, you produce the energy dissipation you require. Getting rid of a quake's energy is crucial. This one works like a shock absorber in your car. The good thing about these elements as viscous dampers is that you don't need to replace them after the earthquake. And this technology can be also improved into a high-end technology with, with uh, magnetism. This is a magnetorheological damper. The, the fluid you're using is a, a very special fluid. This piston contains not only a metallic liquid, but also silver coils. Pass an electric current through these coils and the fluid becomes stiffer. This is the, essentially the, the fluid. If you see, it's, it's a very viscous oil mm -hmm. that has uh, particles, iron particles in, in suspension. But if you, uh, if you take this fluid and you put here a magnetic field, you will see that this fluid becomes a solid. Huh. And, and basically, if I just turn this off, you will see this as a fluid again. So the magnet is actually changing the viscosity of the fluid. Exactly, and you can ch change that continuously you know, in the process, and you're selecting at every single instant of motion what kind of uh, viscous damper you want. Imagine this is a massive damper at the top of a building. Now in development, it has the ability to counteract the quake's movement with each motion. So it's full of liquid, and then an earthquake strikes, and the liquid will actually change viscosity according to what's happening with the earthquake, is that right? Exactly, we're measuring, you know, at every single instant what's going on with the building and depending on the motions, we decide what kind of viscosity we want to select. Juan Carlos it isn't just protecting new buildings, but retrofitting old ones and poorer housing to make them quake-proof, this time using existing tech in novel ways. Beautiful building, but obviously it suffered a lot of damage. Is this all from earthquakes? Yes, everything you see here, 1985 especially. And, right. and now, you know, the 2010, they're producing all the collapse of several elements. So when you come into a building like this, and your job is to restore it and make it seismically protected, where do you start? 
we want to preserve exactly what we're seeing here, you know, this, this beauty of the columns, you know, the original architecture of the building. We will not touch anything that is inside here. We'll just go underneath here and like molds and get, you know, all the ground out of the basement. Just build, you know, the new foundations and new columns and put the isolators on top of the columns. Rubber seismic isolators were developed in Chile. CIRVE have worked on 60 buildings already. It's going to take five years to employ the tech here. Actually, they are, you know, huge, uh, in this case, are going to be huge rubber pads. You know, they are composed of uh, thin rubber layers and, and steel sheens, basically like a sandwich of, of rubber, rubber and, and steel. And steel. This, this is an element that will be about, you know, 30 centimeters in height, probably a meter in, in a diameter. Right. Okay, and they can sustain, you know, loads of over 1,000 tons. It's going to be uh, very flexible in the horizontal direction and very, very stiff in the vertical direction. So the technology that you're using here is very different to what we saw in the titanium tower. Why did you choose to use this, this method with the isolators here in the church? Well, this, this is the second technique. You know, the first one is, is, you know, energy dissipation. This is seismic isolation, essentially. And, and the reason is because the building is, is very heavy. We, this, this technique works really well for very, very heavy structures in general, and also that are very brittle. And just creating this, this interface that we call the isolation interface. And it's like putting, you know, this, this church on top of an ice skating ring. So the, uh, the thing moves, you know, and the structure will remain still. You have the church sitting on top of around 100 disks. And when an earthquake strike, the idea is that the earth moves, but the church stays still. Exactly. It's like, you know, hanging the, the church from heaven, basically. <laughs> That's the idea. Natural disasters like earthquakes will continue to claim lives and devastate cities around the world. We need to keep developing technology further so that when an earthquake does strike, we're as well protected as possible.